Hey guys, I've got a really great one for you today. Not only is the product I'm about to show you the most innovative and feature packed seven inch Android head unit, but it also benchmarks faster than any other seven inch Android head unit as well. I'm talking of course of the Atoto S8 Ultra. Let's check it out. Now, if you don't know who Atoto are, you probably should. They are pretty much one of the most well-known Android head unit brands. And one of the reasons for that is because they actually sell their products on Amazon. And that means so that you get that added benefit of retailer warranty, and you only really get that when the manufacturers themselves actually trust their own products because they know if you're not happy, you're just gonna return it. So Atotos are generally very, very high quality devices and I have indeed done some reviews on their products before. Now this one is special because it is their flagship, the S8 Ultra Generation 2. This is basically as good as it gets, not only from an Atoto perspective, but from a seven inch Android head unit perspective as well. So you're probably wondering why I said that the S8 Ultra is innovative. And the reason for that is it, it has two features that you will not find on any other Android head unit. One of those is gesture control. This thing has a sensor on the face allowing you to do gestures. I haven't had a play with it yet, so we're gonna see how useful that is. But it is a very, very interesting thing and it's great to see these head unit manufacturers actually designing something out of the box which should improve the user interface. And the other thing is that all of the S8 series are compatible with Atoto's revolutionary 360 camera system. I've historically done quite a few videos on 360 systems and they're a ball ache to install because you've got the four cameras that need to be installed on the mirrors and the front of the back of the car. But the 360 system on the S8 is different. It's made primarily for when you reverse and it's all done with one single camera. How is that possible, you ask? Well, I was exactly the same. It does it in some revolutionary way, where as you're reversing, the camera scans the ground and creates a 360 image around the car, so you can actually see whether you're between the lines when you're parking. I'm gonna have to play with this and show you it because it is cool and uh, it's, it's one of those things that it just has to be seen. Aside from that, you have the awesome UIS 7862A CPU, which is the fastest that you get in any Android head unit. And as I said before, the S8 actually benchmarks faster than any other seven inch Android head unit, which is absolutely great. And you have all the good stuff, such as wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, QLED display, DSP, all the good stuff that you would expect in a premium head unit. And yes, you would expect it to have all of that stuff because it's probably the most expensive seven inch Android head unit that you can buy. But I should probably say that the gesture control itself is something that is only with the Ultra, but the other S8s, you get the S8 Standard and the S8 Premium, both of those are compatible with the 360 system and they are both very fast as well and they're much cheaper. So just bear that in mind when you make a choice of which one you want. Atoto make a range of products, they're all brilliant. Just buy to your budget. The other optional accessory that I'm gonna be looking at with this particular head unit is the Atoto TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. That is these four little adapters that you screw onto the tire valves on your car on each wheel, and it feeds information to the Atoto head unit to show you what the pressures are of your tires. Nice way to modernize your car. And you may notice that both of these optional accessories actually bear the Atoto logo, and that makes Atoto a little bit different from some of the Android head unit manufacturers which only supply generic Android compatible accessories. Let me just remind you this is not a paid endorsement. I do not get paid to endorse any company or product. This is just me checking out a new product and sharing it with you guys. Okay let's have, go and have a look. And here it is. Now you're gonna see how this is very similar to all of the other Atoto products in which they have these lovely physical buttons along the bottom here, and they really add some additional quality to the device. But what's different with the SA Ultra 
is that it has additional bits and pieces on the left hand side. So what we have is a SIM entry point because this thing has built in 4G mobile data. Then you have a micro SD card slot. You have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input and a built-in microphone. And then yes, what you have here is a sensor for gestures. This is something that you won't find on any other Android head unit. It is something which is specific to this. So I can't wait to get this in the car and see what this does. And then down here we have a reset button. Let's have a look at the other side. So what we have up here is the 4G mobile antenna. We have a GPS FACRA connector here. And over here we have a bunch of RCAs. So we've got subwoofer pre-out, front video in, rear video in, video and audio auxiliary input here. And then you've got front and rear left and right audio pre-outs here. So you've got in total five RCA pre-outs, front and rear, and subwoofer here. Over here we have the sockets for the USB inputs. And look at this, Atoto have also given us a Spadif digital optical output as well. So that means that if you have an amp or a DSP with a digital connection on it, you can get an optical cable straight from this device to that amp or DSP for a completely lossless signal. You won't get any of the nasty electrical interference coming through copper cables from RCAs if you use this, if you have an amp or a DSP with that optical connection on it. That is a really premium feature. Then down here, we have a Wi-Fi factor connector. We have the mic input here. We have the aftermarket steering wheel interface here, which I've shown on my channel before. And then we have the main loom entry point here. So also in the box, we have some very comprehensive manuals for USB ports. I think that's the most amount of USBs I've ever seen on any Android head unit. So you get four USBs with this. The Wi-Fi antenna. 4G mobile network antenna, GPS antenna, some brackets, some bezels, some screen protectors, which is a nice touch, and three main loom options, which is really nice. So you've got the cut off ends one here, which is good for the States because you guys over there for some reason don't have any standard system for car radios. So you can just find which wire you want and splice it in manually here. And then you've got two with the standard ISO connection on A and B. And the only difference between these two is that the red and the yellow wires, which is the permanent 12 volt connection and the ignition live 12 volt connection are swapped one to the other because some cars are wired differently from others. So they're giving you two different options. If one loses your settings every time you restart the car, use the other wire and that will solve the problem. So they literally give you everything that you could possibly need. Now, if you're in the USA, these ISO connections are not going to be included unless you ask for them. So just bear that in mind. If you buy the Atoto unit and you'd like to have one of these ISO leads, if you contact Atoto, they will sort you out. Okay, you've seen it. Can't wait to get it in the car. Let's go and do that now. And here it is installed in my Saab 93. And along with the SA Ultra, I have also installed their awesome 360 camera system and their DVR dash camera and their TPMS tire pressure monitoring system as well. So this is like the whole kit installed in this car, but I'll show you those accessories in the features section a little bit later. But for now, let's switch it on and see how long it takes to boot up. So it's on now. And there we go, straight away. And as you would expect of a head unit of this cost, it does have a very quick boot up time. Now, before we start talking about the launcher and the software, etc., let me just have a quick word about the screen itself. It has an absolutely beautiful QLED display. It, it really does look fantastic. And saying all of that, and the screen is still only 600p of resolution, which is a testament to say that the resolution is not the be all and end all to get a good quality screen. Although I will say at this price point, it is a shame that Ato didn't add at least a 720p resolution screen. And along with that, you have these typical physical buttons from Atoto, adding that additional quality to the actual whole unit. Now let's talk about Atoto's awesome launcher software. So let me just pause this music. So what you're looking at now is not standard. How it normally comes is like this. What you have is you have a radio widget up here or you might have the local music widget up here for local music. You get to choose icons up here and icons down the bottom. Very, very simple stuff, very functional, works fine, right? Because these are real widgets, it actually allows you to add whatever widget you want. And as you can see on the second page here, what I've done is I've gone for a Spotify widget here 
so that I can uh, sort of play my music and have my Spotify app right on the dashboard there. And then I've got this cool little music visualization thing happening over here. And really it's endless what you can do with this because if, you, if we look at the widgets, um, you know, that you can get for this, and these are the ones that I've downloaded, but really the Play Store is absolutely jam-packed full of Android widgets and you can literally put anything you want here. I mean, you could keep it simple and just have a clock if you wanted to, but come on, this is the beauty of Android and the fact that they've allowed you to put widgets on the dashboard, mwah, like absolutely beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm very happy with the way that that looks. So having a look at the dashboard here, everything on here was totally customizable. Well, however you set your dashboard, you're always gonna have these icons down here. If you tap this, this is gonna show you where all of your apps are. And then if you go further than your apps, you're gonna find all your widgets for your dashboard customization. So that's nice and easy. Looking at the FM radio, if we tap here, you can see that you actually do have RDS and it does function on the actual saved stations. And that's something that you really don't see on a lot of Android head units. You're stuck with just looking at the frequency of the radio station, but on this, you actually do get to see the actual station name. And then of course, if you bought the DAB stick with the 8Auto unit, you'll also have the ability to listen to digital audio broadcast, DAB radio. And you can see that you have various stations available depending on the area that you live in, of course. If we pull down from the top, you get some additional options. The one that's interesting to me is iComfort, this here. And what it does is it gives the whole screen a kind of yellow hue. And when you're driving at night and it's on its darkest setting, sometimes even then uh, whites can be quite bright. So what this does is it just takes the edge off of the white and makes it more comfortable for nighttime driving, which is very, very nice. So let's have a look at the settings. Now this is one of the things I really like about Atoto. This is not a standard Android automotive menu. Like this, this has been designed by their own development team and it has been designed with the customer in mind. And that's really important and it just makes using it a breeze. Because everything that you want to access, everything you want to find is just so easily found in these menus. Everything is very clear and intuitive. That goes for the steering wheel controls, which are obviously something that you're all gonna to want to know about. Set up steering wheel keys here, and it's simply a matter of pressing a button on the steering wheel and then pressing the corresponding button on the screen here, and it saves it, and, and that is it. And then changing the colors of the buttons down here is simply a matter of going into panel illumination and choosing what color you'd like it to be. Obviously, I've got it green because that is what is the color of inside this Saab. So let's talk about speed. This has the amazing octa-core UIS 7862A CPU, and that is the fastest Android head unit CPU. And the S8 Ultra here benchmarks faster than any other seven inch Android head unit that I've tested. So it is literally number one for speed. It does also have four gigabytes of memory. The next point of call is of course to run our normal speed test, which is running everyday apps and seeing how long they take to actually load Spotify and Waze. Let's do that now, Spotify. Practically instantaneous, and that's exactly what you would expect with this particular CPU in this. It is very, very fast head unit. And then we'll do Waze as well. I mean, it would be barely be faster if you actually had the thing already loaded into memory. It's that fast, so very quick, and that really shows you the true power that is in the SA Ultra. It is truly one of the most powerful Android head units that money can buy. Right, let's talk about features because the SA Ultra does actually have quite a lot. We'll start with the basic functionality of an Android head unit, and that is the fact that you do actually have the ability to uh, watch a bit of YouTube or a bit of Netflix because obviously you can install whatever video apps that you want on here. But also it's compatible with the HD DVR or the dash cam system. If I hit this button here, you'll be able to see the front of the car. And this is where you'll actually be able to review all of the recordings and such in the actual car itself, a bit like a Tesla. Also, we have their built-in TPMS system. As you can see, you can see all four of my tire pressures here in PSI, or you can have it in bar if you prefer. But the point is, in the event that one of the tires drops below a specific pressure, it will basically send a warning on the screen that we need to do something about that. So that's a nice cool feature that you only really get on more modern cars and you can get it with this Atoto unit as well. So there's two major features that I've never seen on any other Android head unit. One of them is the gesture control and the other is the emulated 360 parking, both of which I'm gonna show you now. So the best way for me to show you the gestures is by actually using them. I've already set up certain actions for each gesture, so watch and see what it can do. 
So if I want to go backtrack or forward a track, and if I want to turn the volume up, volume down. I think that's an absolutely amazing feature to add to an Android head unit because it's so simple, yet it can be really effective, especially for people who do not have the steering wheel controls. Now, there are other options, of course, if you don't have steering controls, for example, you can buy the Atoto little thing that you put on your steering wheel to add steering wheel controls if you don't have them. Whilst I was making this video, I did accidentally set off the gesture control when I was actually trying to do something else. It might take some tweaking to set it up how you actually want to use it, but ultimately it's a really, really good idea and I really like it. Right, I'm going to show you the emulated 360 parking now, but to do that, I need some space to reverse. So I'm going to move up and then I'm going to reverse and I'm going to show it to you on the screen. Okay, so pop the car into reverse and what you can see is it has a normal reverse camera and then it has this sort of image here with the rear of the car and then all of this blackness. When I start reversing, you will see that it will start to build an image around the car and this is a really good way to find out whether or not you're inside a parking space. No more wondering is it in yet because you can actually see when your car is in the parking space. Look at that. It's literally drawing an image around the car so you have a, a general idea of where your car is. I think that is absolutely amazing. Naturally, this has wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, so let's just check that out now. So as you can see, Atoto is an available device. I'm going to pair it now. And then we go to CarLink 2. Welcome to Android Auto. And there we go. Perfect. Oh, it's playing music now. Let me just pause that. So there we go. We've got full access to Android Auto. Everything is exactly as I want it. All of my apps are just here so that's absolutely perfect okay let's see if it's that simple with apple carplay so just find a toto in the bluetooth settings and connect to that allow now we go to carling 2 again waiting for device to connect connecting on the phone it says use carplay yep let's use carplay verification approved and there we go, nice and easy. Everything's working exactly as it should be. Full Apple CarPlay, again, completely wirelessly from the phone itself, and it was very, very simple to connect. Literally just connect it via Bluetooth, and it works. Okay, let's talk about sound, which is something that the S8 range of Atoto units actually do very well indeed. So if we pop the top down here and go to Equalizer, and you can see that it has a 16 band graphic equalizer. And the beauty of this is it actually allows you to set separate equalizer settings for both the front speakers and the rear speakers of the car, which is cool. You also have presets up here. If you don't want to, you know, mess about with your own equalizer settings, you can just choose one of the ones that they actually have supplied for you. It also has time correction, so you can set individual delays to the speakers to get that sound that you're looking for. And you also have a rear speaker boost here. Under bass boost, you have the option of choosing a specific frequency and you can boost that one frequency specifically for the front or rear of your car. So you have that control over front and rear as well, which is great. And you see this button up here that says sub and that will give you the frequency control of the actual subwoofer as well in a nice graphical way. Sound field is just your standard fade and balance. And then you have crossover functionality for again, your front and rear speaker system separately as well. So all in all, you've got tons and tons of control from a sound perspective. The amplifier and the DSP chips that are built into this are top quality. It sounds amazing, really does sound very, very good indeed, as you would expect for a flagship unit from Atoto. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Atoto SA Ultra. If I've missed anything, please do ask in the comment section below and I will see what I can do about answering your questions. If there's any other Android head units that you'd like me to have a look at, please do ask and I will do my best to do that for you. And of course, if you like this kind of content, please do subscribe because I've got tons of other head units that I will be reviewing in the near future.